up, what up? Let's talk about sinusoidal functions in AP pre-calculus. You can't spell fun without sinusoidal functions. Let's start out with the most basic form of a sinusoidal function. I'm actually going to rewrite that. I stole this picture from the internet, and upon further review, I don't like it anymore. The most basic form of a sinusoidal function is y or f of x equals a sine, parentheses, b, another parentheses, x minus c, close it, close it, plus d. Now, there's obviously four letters that matter in this case. A is the amplitude. Okay, now let me just draw out some random sinusoidal function looks something like that. That's what a sinusoidal function is. A stands for the amplitude. A lot of people think the amplitude is the distance from the tippy top to the very bottom. That's not true. It's half the distance from the tippy top to the very bottom. That is called the amplitude. Period is where things repeat itself. So if I were to go to the tippy top here, and measure how long it takes to get from this tippy top to that tippy top, that gets me my period. Now, B is not my period. B is my frequency. If I have the period and I want to find B, I'm going to do 2 pi over B to, well, that'll get me period, but I could do 2 pi over the period to get me B. Okay, so that's that. C and D are unique here. They're my shifts. Now C represents a phase shift. Now we know from all the other types of problems that we've done that usually things inside the parentheses with X are backwards, and that is true. If I have something like blah, 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 X plus four, that does not mean you take your sinusoidal function and move it to the right four. It's opposite. That actually means move it left four. So that is a horizontal shift, also known as a phase shift. Last but not least, D is my vertical shift, but that also introduces a new concept called the midline. Now, a midline is a horizontal line that cuts my sinusoidal function in half, okay? It is a horizontal line, which is Y equals some random number. D gives me that number. So D basically takes the middle of my sinusoidal function and shifts it up or down depending on whether this is positive or negative. And very often you will be asked, hey, what's the midline? The midline is D, okay? So that is the typical equation. We will use this equation a million bazillion times during this slideshow, this video. Memorize it, know it, love it, worship it. Don't worship it but just, you know, know it. All right, <clears throat> we talked about amplitude. How amplitude affects a graph can be seen in this picture here. Here I give you cos, I give you three cos, I give you five cos. Here's regular cos, see how it peaks out at one? Here's three cos, see how it peaks out at three? Here's five cos, see how it peaks out at five? That's it, that's it. The period does not change. Notice how all of these hit the x-axis at the same exact spot. Notice how all of these repeat its cycle at 2 pi. That's because the amplitude has no effect on any shift, no effect on any uh, period, any frequency. It just affects the height. If I were to make one of these guys negative, then you're just going to literally take your guy and reflect it over the x-axis like you normally do when you have a negative um, transformation like that. Okay, so that's amplitude. I think we probably feel comfortable if we feel comfortable with the first four sections of this uh, unit. We feel comfortable with amplitude. Same thing with period, but frequency is kind of the new guy. Okay, now again, when you're given a number in front of x, that number is called your frequency. So in a case like this, the frequency would be 1. Okay, now if, and so I would say B equals one because the number in front of X is usually represented by B whenever we have that equation. Now, if I wanted to find the period, you find the period by doing two pi over the frequency. So two pi over one means that sine X has a period of two pi. We know that sine pi is in purple, in purple, or sine x is in purple, so it starts out at 0, 0, and it repeats itself at 2 pi. When I multiply a number to x, it compresses things, 
okay? It takes my period and it shortens it. Why? Well, B in this case would be pi. So the period in this case would be two pi over my period or with my frequency, which is pi. That cancels out and gives me two. Two pi is six point something. Two is two. So if you look at this guy, this repeats its process, and we're looking at the black line. This repeats its process every two. So right there is two. And then it repeats it again at four and repeats it again at six and so on and so forth. So multiplying a number to x compresses your function. Dividing a number stretches it out. Okay. And so I would look at this and some people might be like, well, there's no number in front of x. X is on the, the numbers on the bottom. Listen, buddy, stop talking like that. And you can write this out as one third x, which means b would be one third. So my period would be two pi over one third. Oh my goodness, a fraction on the bottom? Well, let's just multiply the top and the bottom by its reciprocal, which is three over one or three, and these guys cancel out. And so the period is six pi. Okay, so looking at this red line, even though we don't see it, this stretches out to three pi, but over here at negative three pi, we see that it's kind of like, on the x-axis and then it goes below and then it goes above and then it repeats itself from negative three pi to regular three pi, which is six pi, okay? So the period is every time or how many units it takes for something to cycle, okay? And the frequency kind of has to almost do with like a rate, so to speak. It actually deals with the angle measurement created by like a circle and when dealing with these things. That's something that we'll see in the future future videos, I'm sure, knowing myself. Last but not least, we're going to look at the vertical and the horizontal shifts. So in orange, yellow, whatever you want to call it, you see your regular cosine starting out at one and then bottoming out. When I take cosine and I subtract pi over two from it, what I'm actually doing is I'm taking my cosine function and I'm moving it right half a pi. So now it's there. And it just so happens that cos x minus pi over two is sine x. Isn't that something? You'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. We'll deal with that later. Cos x plus three on the outside means I take the regular cosine function that starts at one and I go up one, two, three. Is that four? I think that's four. Oh, that's because it starts at one. Yeah, okay, so my fault. One, two, three three. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get started. Uh, this is basically for sine x. I'm going to sketch this knowing what I know. Maybe what I could do is answer the questions first. That might be helpful. If I was comparing this to y equals, that is an eraser, y equals a sine uh, parentheses b x minus c. I'm doing a lot and I'm wasting a whole lot of time because I don't have a minus c. I don't have a b and I don't have a d. All this is, is this is basically just saying, look, that's my amplitude. My amplitude is four. Okay. Uh, my frequency is the number in front of x. So b is invisible one. The way you find your period, if given b is the period is two pi over the frequency. So period is two pi over one, which is two pi. So all this is, is the sine function stretched out. Okay, so let's try to draw that out. Holy cow. <laughs> Uh, drawing lines is not that fun. And I was like, maybe I should include graphs. No, I don't need a graph. I'll just make my own. I do have graphs later, but I don't know. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It peaks out at four. It bottoms out at negative four. This is sine, which starts at zero, zero. It'll peak out at four, and that will happen at pi over two. And then it'll come down at regular pi and cross the x-axis, bottom out at negative four 
at three pi over two and then repeat the process at two pi. So let me try to draw this out. Okay, starts as a sign, so it starts at zero, zero, peaks out at four, and that happens at pi over two. Then it bottoms out at pi, well, not bottoms out, but it hits the x-axis, completely bottoms out at three pi over two, and then comes back up to repeat the process at two pi. And then more, and then more, and then more, more, more. All I had to worry about here uh, was the amplitude. That's the only difference, just the amplitude. All right, what's next? Hmm. F of X equals negative cos X. Sketch it. All right, well, the only thing I have to worry about here is the fact that the amplitude is now a negative number. Cosine, regular cosine, a rough draft, starts out at one and goes like this. When you have a negative in front of it, you are literally reflecting everything over the x-axis. So this flips upside down. So let me draw this out, okay? This won't start out at one. This will start out at negative one. And then it'll come up, hit the x-axis at pi over two. It'll hit one at pi. It'll come back down and hit the x-axis again at three pi over two and then repeat the process at negative one at two pi. So let me draw that out. Start at negative one, start from the bottom, like Drake. And it's gonna come up and it's gonna hit pi over two, and then it's going to max out at one, come back down three pi over two, and then repeat right there. When does f of x equal 1 on the interval 0, 2 pi? Well, here's the interval 0 and 2 pi. It hits 1 just once. And that just once is right there at pi. So when x is pi is when f of x is equal to 1. Okay. When is f of x concave up? on uh, the interval zero to two pi. Well, concave up looks like this. And concave up happens here at uh, there to there. It's an inflection point. So this is concave up, concave down, concave down, concave down, inflection point, concave up, concave up, concave up. So we are concave up between zero and pi over two, but not including pi over two because you don't include it. It's neither concave up nor concave down on the inflection point union. Three pi over two, two pi. And technically I can, technically I can include zero and two pi because it's, it is concave down on those and they allow me to include them. So I'm allowed to include them there. I'm allowed to include them there. List all the inflection points. Well, the inflection points are going to happen at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, negative pi over 2. So how can I word that? Ooh, pi over 2 times k would be like 1 pi over 2 or 2 times pi over 2. No, I can't word it out like that. It has to be k plus pi over 2. That's how it would work. K, in this case, and by the way, these are X values, so maybe I should say X equals K plus pi over 2. K, in this case, is any integer. So, 0 plus pi over 2 is pi over 2. 1 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. Negative 1 plus pi over 2 is negative pi over 2, so on and so forth. So those are my inflection points. Uh, X is an integer. There you go. Okay? K is an integer. There you go. There you go. Oh, great, a graph. I've, I've smartened up. All right, sketch three cos X over two. Now I'm comparing this to the whole function here. 
Okay. Now I don't have the whole function, so I'm not going to write out the whole function. However, I am going to rewrite this out as three cos half of X. Okay. Now let's label what I know. The number in front of X or the whole number in front of the whole thing is my amplitude. So my amplitude is three. Okay. One half is my frequency, not my period. I find out what my period is by doing two pi over one half. Multiply the top and the bottom by two, these cross out, and I end up with a period of four pi. Okay, so I'm going to, this is a cosine which starts at one, two, three. Okay, the period is four pi, which means I'm going, I don't have four pi, so I can't like go up here and start all over again. I didn't leave myself enough space, so this is how I'm going to view it. If I max out here, I'm going to bottom out at half of my period. So I'm going to bottom out here at three at two pi, which means I cross the x axis at regular pi, and I'm going to come back up and hit it again at three pi. Now, cosine is an even function. And since I didn't shift anything, especially left or right, horizontally, I know what's going to happen. As I move to the left, I'm going to cross uh, the x-axis at pi. So let me put a dot there. I'm going to bottom out at negative 3 at negative 2 pi. And I'm going to hit negative 3 pi. So let me try to draw this out the best that I can, which I am really bad at. Although this is looking okay, and now I'm starting to jinx myself because I'm getting confidence and I'm running out of space, and I'm not good at this, and I almost made it. My midline is where this guy gets cut in half horizontally. Well, it gets cut in half at the y-axis. Now, we've mentioned before that when you add a number to this whole thing, y equals your number is the midline. Well, I have no number added, which means it's zero. So the midline is the equation y equals zero. The maximum value happens at three. The minimum value happens at negative three. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is three cos half a, pi, uh, half a pi or half an x. I mean, half an x, not half a pi, half an x. Three cos half a pi would live right there. Now you know. Now you know. More, 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 more. All you want is more, more, more. Remember the Leave Britney Alone guy? That's what he said. Look it up. It just, you youngsters probably have no clue what I'm talking about. Ugh. All right. Now I'm going to really write out the whole thing. Now I'm going to really compare this to A uh, sine b parentheses x minus c close parentheses close parentheses plus d now the nice thing here is b is invisible one so i don't have to panic i don't have to fear b is invisible one my amplitude is three that minus pi means i shift this to the right pi. That's a horizontal shift to the right pi. Remember, it's backwards land when you deal with signs uh, inside the x parentheses. This means I have a horizontal or a vertical shift of positive one, so I go up positive one. Okay, so this is how I'm going to draw this out. Okay, my midline is y equals one. So I'm going to draw my midline to begin this out. This kind of acts as my new x-axis, okay, when I draw this out. Since I have a horizontal shift moving to the right pi, that means I begin my sign at pi. Since my frequency is 1, that means my period is 2 pi. So at pi, 3 pi it repeats, negative pi it repeats, negative 3 pi it repeats. 
okay? I start out at this new point. My amplitude is three, which means I go up three and then recross here, go down three, recross. So going the other way, I'd go up here, recross, down, recross, up, recross, down, recross. All right, so again, this right here is my starting point. I'm going to go up halfway in between my, so basically a fourth of the period, which is half a pi. That's when I make sure I'm up three spaces because this is sine. Then I, every three quarters of a pi, that happens again. So here I am at two pi, halfway in between, go down three, there you have it. Okay, so now I'm running out of space. Now let's go to the left. I'm gonna go in between one quarter of my period, go down three, I'll come back up, a quarter of my period is up three, come back down, a quarter of my period is down three, go back up, a quarter of my period is up three, go back down, try to draw this out. Okay, this is where I began. Okay, sine goes up like that first, then makes its way down, then back down again, and makes its way up. And do it again, holy cow, holy cow. Do it again, I did it again. I'm just not good at drawing these things. Why don't I, since I'm not good at drawing them right to left, why don't I draw them left to right? Okay, I have the dots. Hope everyone's having a good day. I hope uh, now would be a time to, what do YouTubers say in these moments? Uh, smash the subscribe button, drop a comment. All right, I did it. After all of that, my maximum value is four. My minimum value is negative two. Oh, look at this one. This one's different. Let's write out our formula. Y equals A sine B parentheses X minus C close it, close it plus D. Now, you might be like, different? Yeah, there's more numbers. Uh, I see parentheses here, but I don't see parentheses here. So this is what you must do each and every time that you don't have that set of parentheses and you're adding or subtracting inside and you have something in front of X. You need to factor out the number in front of X, no matter what it is, factor it out. You divide it from that guy. Fortunately, this one's friendly enough, but you have to divide it out. You have to factor it out. So this becomes two sine, factor out the two, that leaves us with x minus, divide that by 2, so 2 pi, parentheses, uh, parentheses again, minus 1. Now let's analyze what we have. The number in front of sine is my amplitude, so my amplitude is 2. My frequency is the number in front of x when it's factored like that, so b is 2. What that means, though, is my period is going to be 2 pi over that b, so 2 pi over 2, which simplifies out to pi, so that's my period, sometimes spelled with a t. All you youngsters know what that means. Um, what else? This is minus 2 pi inside the parentheses, which means I'm going to have a horizontal or a phase shift going to the right positive two pi distance. Minus one means I go down one, or in other words, my midline is y equals negative one. So now what I have to do is I have to draw out my regular sine thing and have my new starting spot. So the way I write out that starting spot is I always draw my midline first, which is negative one. So I'm gonna draw out y equals negative one right there, okay? This shifts over or begins at right two pi. So that guy right there is where I'm going to start my sign. Okay, sign starts at the origin that it's supposed to start at. So it's gonna start up there. It's not cosine where it starts here. It's sine where it starts there. The period is pi. 
So you're going to repeat every pi. So you're going to repeat here, repeat here, repeat here, repeat here, repeat here, repeat here. Okay, so what would happen is this goes up a couple, comes back down, crosses again, goes down and repeats. So while we're at it, let's draw the spots where it crosses this new midline axis again. So every half it's going to cross, every half a period it's going to cross right there. Now again, it's going to start here, go up two, and then come back down. So every quarter of a period and every three quarters of a period, it's going to peak out and then bottom out. So let's say that every quarter of a period, it's going to go up two, every quarter 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 up two, every three quarters down two, every three quarters down two, every three quarters down two. Hell is repetition, the book once said. The book was called Storm of the Century. Hell is repetition. Well, welcome to the Math Teacher Code channel. All right. Time to draw this puppy out. So I start out here. Let's get a different color. Looks so pretty, by the way. Um, goes up, comes down goes down, comes up, and repeat. So let me do this over here because I'm not good at going right to left. Basically, if you're bad at drawing these, so am I, okay? And so like, it's kind of like my, my channel is like, learn how to draw signs with a guy who doesn't have any artistic talent whatsoever. All right, almost there. That looks bad. Almost there. Ugh. Did the best I could. Did the best I could. But there you have it. And again, it's tricky there. That's the trick. The trick is to make this look like this by factoring out the number in front of X. It has to be the number in front of X. And if for any reason, like that's a three, then you would have to do like four thirds pi and it just gets grosser and it is what it is. But yeah, that's, that's how you do it. That is how you do it. Oh, I got to stop. Otherwise uh, I'm going to get flagged for copyright. I'm not Montel Jordan. Show why both of these are true. These are fun little trigonometric identities. Hey, did you know that if I take sine and shift it to the left pi over two, that I get cosine? Let's show that. Let's show that. Let's show that if I were to take sine, so I'm going to draw a very, very, very basic picture of sine. It's not going to look good at all. Okay, but I'm going to try to do this in one foul swoop, right? I have pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi, okay? If I were to take regular sine, which looks like this, okay? And if I were to move this, to the left pi over two. So let's go over here to, to the left pi over two. If I were to move this to the left pi over two, it's cosine, you see it? It's cosine because that guy starts there. And if I drew my lines a little bit more correctly, you would get cosine. Well, look at that. Look at God, look at God. All right, well, let's try this again. Let's try this again. If I were to take a regular cosine function, which tell you what, let's just use this guy. Let's use this guy, because that is cosine now. If I were to take regular cosine and move that to the left. So let's extend this graph just a little bit further to the left, a little bit further to the left, and make you negative, uh, uh, what is that, pi? Okay, if I were to move you, 
to the left. Oh, the picture's not good. The picture's not good. Here, let's do this. Perfect. If I were to do that, that is negative sign. Write a sine equation for the graph below. All right, sine equation. We've got y equals a uh, times sine b mm, parentheses x minus c close it close it plus d. All right, what do I have? First things first, we should always draw the midline. So it peaks out of five, bottoms out of one, the midline's halfway in between that, which is three. So the midline is the equation y equals three, which means d is three. We max out at five, we bottom out at one, which means the amplitude is two. That's what I know. This is sine, and sine is supposed to start at zero, zero. This does. There is no uh, horizontal phase shift. And the period for this guy is 2 pi, which means the frequency is 1. So these are the only two pieces of information that I need to come up with my equations. So y equals 2 sine 1 x, no phase shift, so I'll simplify this, I'll clean this up in a minute, plus 3. Okay, so you're not necessary. Y equals 2 sine regular X, because 1 times X is just regular X plus 3. Okay. I can handle that. I can handle that just fine. Write a cosine equation for this graph. Okay, y equals a cos uh, parentheses b parentheses x minus c close it close it plus d. All right, uh, cosine starts at one zero. That doesn't happen here. Now let's not panic. Let's not panic. I need a midline which this peaks out at one, bottoms out at what appears to be negative three. So the midline is going to be at negative one. The midline is at negative one. So that gives us D of negative one. Uh, if I peak out at one and bottom out at three, that means my amplitude is two, which I believe it was last time. So not really a creative job when I come up with these examples. Uh, that's that. Now, cosine is supposed to start up here, and it didn't. So why don't I pick a new starting spot where it is supposed to start at the tippy top, and that's right here. So it starts here, which means I moved to the right pi to make that happen. Okay, so I'm moving to the right pi. I'm moving... I'm moving down one, I have an amplitude of two. Now I need my period, my period is two pi again. So that makes life easy, which makes my frequency one. Okay, so my amplitude is a, y equals a, which is two, cosine, b, which is 1, times parentheses, x. If I move to the right pi, then it's going to be x minus pi. Close it. Close it. And then minus 1. So let's clean this up. y equals 2 cos, distribute the 1, x minus pi minus 1. A Ferris wheel, by the way, AP pre-calc exam problems love the Ferris wheel problem. Um, pretty popular. You'll see it probably on a practice test or an actual test here and there. 
Ferris wheel problem. The Ferris wheel has a diameter of 40 meters and rotates at a rate of 0.2 revolutions per minute. The bottom of the wheel is located two uh, meters above the ground. Create a sinusoidal equation to represent the height of the passenger as a function of time, assuming the passenger boards at the boards at the lowest point. Okay, boards at the lowest point means uh, not sign. So I, I could use sine. I could use sine. It doesn't really matter. You could use sine. You could use cosine. Uh, it's all really good with these things. But you have y equals a sine b x minus c close it close it plus d. All right. Diameter is 40 meters, which means you're 20. You're 20. Okay. You are at its lowest two meters off the ground. Okay. Which means here it has a midline of 22, the Taylor Swift special, and then it peaks out at 42, the Jackie Robinson special. Okay. So I have that going for me. So this is what I know. I know my amplitude is going to be 20. Now, before I get too much into this, okay, this is what's going on. Okay. Uh, and you know what, let me lower this a lot because we're talking about real life and you can't go underground. You're starting at two, you're starting at two. And uh, at some point you peak out at 42 and you're at the bottom and then you make your way up and then you're at the top and you make your way down and you repeat and you repeat and you repeat, peat, 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 peat. Okay. Now the midline happens here at 22, the Taylor Swift special. So that gives me a D of 22. I still need C and I still need B. My B can be found by figuring out what my period is. Now, this guy rotates at 0.2 revolutions per minute. 0.2 revolutions per minute, which means it takes five minutes for a complete revolution. That is really slow. But the period is going to be five. Now, do I want my period? No, I want my frequency. And in order to find my frequency, I take two pi and divide it by my period. So that would be my frequency. So I don't have to simplify. That kind of makes life a little bit easier. The trickiest part about all of this is the phase shift, okay? Because if I start at the very bottom, sine or cosine doesn't start at the very bottom of anything. Sine is supposed to start here, which means I have to go right a certain amount of time. Now, this whole thing, this whole thing has a period of five, all right? So me going from the bottom to the middle is going to be one quarter of a turn, which means a quarter of five. Okay, so this guy is going to be five over four, which means my phase shift is positive five over four. Not pleasant at all, but I don't really have to make it pleasant. I could just write this out. Y equals 20 sine parentheses B, which is two pi over five parentheses X minus five over four. That'll actually simplify out just fine. Close it, close it. And then plus 22, the Taylor Swift special. Let me write that out. Let me simplify this out and clean it up. I didn't give myself near enough space. Okay, let me write it out here. Y equals 20 sine distribute. We get two pi over five X minus 
minus 2 over 4 is a half, 5 over 5 cancels out, so half a pi, so pi over 2. That's not too bad. Minus pi over 2, close that, plus 22. And that's the Ferris wheel problem. Pretty tricky stuff, I'm not going to lie. All right, last problem is a calculator problem. I love this problem. I invented it, not going to lie. NGL, not going to lie. Uh, made me think of the office. I tried to think of what are things that behave in a sinusoidal way that's kind of floating off the ground a little bit. Well, let's take a big movie screen. Let's have a big movie screen and the DVD logo going boop, 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 boop. And the way that this travels, the height of the DVD logo travels in a sinusoidal function. So this is what's happening. A DVD logo is slowly floating along a movie screen in a movie theater. The height of the logo at given times is given by the table below. No problem, <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot the word. Um, so, you know, at zero minutes, the, the DVD logo is like four, meters off the ground and after one minute it's seven meters off the ground and after two minutes it's 10 meters off the ground boop 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 use a calculator to perform sinusoidal regression to find an equation representing the height above the ground as a function of time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run to a calculator i'm going to type all this information in and that's going to give me an equation that represents a sine function for this data right here all right, stat, let's type out these numbers, zero, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's it. And then we got friendly numbers, thank goodness for that, it's four, seven, ten, uh, seven, four, one, four. All right, <clears throat> so we need to do sinusoidal regression. So you're going to go to stat, you're going to go to calc. And you're going to go up because it's like right there at C, sine reg. You're going to hit enter. Uh, we are going to need to use this guy later. Also, the period, uh, it goes from 4 to 4, and it goes from 0 to 6 to do that. So the period is 6. We're going to use this equation later. So let's go to vars, y vars, enter, enter, and see what grossness we come up with. All right, so y equals 3.954 times sine parentheses 1.057 minus 0 0.527, lots of rounding up, and then close the parentheses plus 5.569. Uh, more rounding up. I wasn't laughing at that number, I swear. Uh, let's write that out. All right, so that equation ended up being y equals 3.954 sine parentheses 1.057x minus 0 0.527 plus 5.569. So there's your equation, sin reg, sine reg. I hope we don't sin reg meaning regularly. Almost done. Use that equation to predict the height of the object at t equals eight minutes. All right, so I have my equation. I know I stored my equation. All I have to do is just find out what happens when t equals eight. All right, so now that I have this equation stored in y equals, why don't we go to zoom trig so we can kind of have a good idea of what it looks like. Not too happy with that. Um, this is the, the, the floating DVD logo, so I need to kind of go a little bit higher. So let's change my window from, it gave me what, zero? So let's go zero. And by the way, if we're talking about real life stuff here, uh, let's do like negative one because we're not going to have negative time. So let's bump this out to 20. I mean, the future problem has eight minutes and 10 minutes. So let's bump this out to 12, not 20. Uh, the height of this thing peaked out at, uh, what was it, 10? So let's bump it up to 11. Let's bump it up to 11. Right, Y max. 
not to be confused with IMAX, speaking of movie theaters, and let's graph. Mm. So the DVD logo is floating around and it goes boop, 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 boop. And in this particular problem, problem B, we care about when, uh, or at, not when, but where we are at moment eight. So I can do second table. Let's go to my table and go to eight and see where we are off the ground. 9.512, so what is that, meters? 9.512 meters off the ground. So when T was equal to eight, I just plugged in eight, I think I used the table, and I ended up getting 9.512 meters off the ground. So that was the answer for B. C is after 10 minutes, when will the logo hit the five meter mark? So since this is sinusoidal and it is a sign, it, it's gonna look like this. So there's gonna be multiple times where this is gonna go up and down and up and down and up and down and hit five meters. I care about when after 10 minutes, the first time it hits the 10 meter mark. So if the 10 meter mark starts there and this is five, for example, I care about the first time it hits that. Okay, so let's see what we come up with. All right, last but not least, after 10 minutes, when will the logo hit the five meter mark? So we care about what happens after 10. So let's go to my window. And since we care about after 10, let's set this uh, from 10 to 20. And just see it. All right. So it's definitely going to hit the five meter mark uh, at some point. But when? Well, why? equals five gives me that five meter mark if I just enter five. So graph, and right around here is where it's gonna hit that five meter mark. So let's find the intersection between these two lines. Second trace intersect is gonna give me that. So let's scooch to the left because I want the first time it hits that five meter mark. So let's scooch to the left of it, hit enter. Let's hit right a few times to the right of it hit enter, hit enter again, and it's going to tell me 12.2561, so 12.256 minutes. So after the 10 minute mark, we ended up with 12.256 minutes. So 12 minutes and 256 seconds. <sighs> Uh, all right, that covers a pretty important chunk about AP Precalculus sinusoidal functions. Hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye.